Hello and welcome back to The Piano Student, episode Hello. four. We're on to the second piece of music, because last week went through the clock, and you impressed me, which is hard to do. Yeah. Hard to do. I know. So we covered that week, we covered all the notes on the piano, because I completely forgot to uh, teach you that before we played the music. Mm -hmm. We then went through where you're going to put your hand on the piano for the first part, what to do with keeping your fingers stuck to the keys, and so on and so forth. If you want to watch that video, it's in the description. We've got a new piece of music. Oh lord. It's all in the bass clef. It's all <laughs> You evil <laughs> man. Right, okay. Panic a lot. Uh. Panic a lot. So here's the idea. You can download this music for free from my website. I'll put a download link in the description as well. Print it off or have it open on a tablet so you can follow along and I'll just keep you aware of what bar Matt's at or even what line he's at as well. Just saves it from being displayed on the screen the whole time. So download it, follow along, and in fact, learn it yourself. Try it with the backing track. That's also on the website. Nice. Yeah? All right. All right, shall we get into it? Yeah. So I realise you actually haven't done a lot of practice on the bass clef. No, I haven't. So this is particularly challenging, Yeah. however it is still only five notes. It is, okay. It is only five notes and your hand is actually, I'll give you a clue, positioned exactly where your right hand was but an octave lower. Right, okay. If that means anything to you. So one in this case obviously meant thumb, it still means thumb. It still means thumb. Thumb is always one. Okay. There you go. Nice. Cool. Yeah. I like that. Thumb is always one, which is sometimes confusing because when you see a five, like mm. in the left hand it's you still, like, even if you think that was always one, you've realised you've got a count back. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. So, can you remember the mnemonics for the left hand? Yeah, so between the lines is A, C, E, G. Oh, yeah. And then it's uh, G, B, D, F, A. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, sorted. Cool. I mean, not mnemonics, but letters, and that does the job as well. Yeah. There you go. So what's the first note? The first note is A, G. It is a G. So... What finger does it tell you to use on that G? Right, so it's Gary inside the else. So he's there, but octave down, so there. Exactly. So if we have a look at a sheet of music, I don't have a pencil. Mm. Do people know what octaves are by this point, by the way? If you, if you think about the word octave, ox being eight, so you go eight notes from the first one you started off at, white notes, let's say. So if I started at C, I go eight notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've gone up an octave, I'm still at a C, but octave higher, and there's octave lower and all that sort of stuff. The reason why I explained this piece as an octave lower is because we're in the bass clef, and that tends to be where it's positioned. Nice. Uh, so, if I grab this pencil, middle C would be positioned about yeah. there on the music. Okay. Yeah? So I don't know if you can see that, I'll try and zoom in. It's just... It would be sort of just below the metronome marking there. So that gives you a reference point in thinking where that left hand would start. Because obviously okay. I just gave you a clue and said, right, it's an octave lower. Mm -hmm. But that's how you should think about it. Just imagine where middle C is yeah. and then reference it. Yeah. It's a common problem that a lot of my students have where they, they know exactly what the notes are, mm. but they don't think about referencing it against that middle C or any other Cs to mm. sort of make sure they're positioned correctly across the piano. Makes sense. Yeah? Okay. Is all logical. So. You're on G, left hand, thumb. God, that feels horrible. Sorted. Same concept as the right hand, you're keeping your fingers stuck to the keys so they don't move about. And this is a piece, again, where you don't have to move your hand whatsoever. Okay. And that's the front door. There. Front. Yep. Okay, and that... We're just looking at the first line for the moment. And that's a D. So that's the dog. And he's jumping around a bit. <laughs> hey? No, I'm just saying you're jumping right in terms of reading, you're, ju you're just whizzing through it to just check the notes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah um, Give him a bit of okay. context. All right, uh, and then we got an F, which is the there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we've got the D again, which is there. Okay, good. So, how many beats is this dotted note at the start? Two. No. Oh, wait, no, it's three. It's three beats. Yeah, because it's got a dot next to it. The dot, yes. Yeah. The dot adds half of the value of the original note onto itself again. Yes. Cool. Try on the first line. Let's see how it goes. Don't worry too much about the room. Just get the notes. Right. Okay. So, we started on Gary. We did. We started on Gary. I started on Gary. I'm putting it off. Yeah. I'm just going to be zooming in as you're saying that. Uh, okay. Right. Right. So. Oh. 
Ooh, unlucky guess. Oh, it's there. Yeah, it's your oh, forefinger. No. Yeah. Oh, of course we didn't use that last time either, did we? No, we did. That was Gary. That was Gary, Gary last time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, cool. It's hard finding that ring finger. It is. It's probably oh. one of the most awkward ones you can find. Oh, it's like when you move that finger and everything moves with it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Right, where's Gary? Where are you, mate? Uh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> We've personified Gary quite badly. Here. <laughs> I wonder if there's any Garys watching. Oh, my girl, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Gary's gonna be so triggered if you've got a viewer with that, with that name. Actually, I should probably give some context. If you haven't seen the first episode, we named <laughs> all of the notes on the keyboard as if it was a street. We had dogs, cats, elephants, front door, back door, and Gary was in the house eating an avocado. Uh, if that makes no sense, watch the video. I'll tell you what, it does make a lot of sense after you go through it. Uh, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> okay, right. Last two notes were wrong, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, frog. Oh, it's back there again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that ring finger. It's a dastardly dog. <sighs> yeah, okay. Tell you what, Yeah. hurts my arm. Oh, this one. Is it really? Yeah, I think I need to move across a bit. To be honest, I'm sort of doing yeah. this. Oh, yes, yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of that. I'll, I'll step back. And ideally, we would be sitting down. Yeah, that doesn't feel too nice. Right, okay. Let's do the second line. Let's jump straight there. Okay. Re see if you can recognise the patterns. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I don't know why I pressed that one. <laughs> what have you done here? Uh, oh no! Not talking about that note yet. So uh, look at the last two notes at the end of bar, uh, at the end of line two. Yeah. Uh, how many beats do they last Those each? Ah, oh, four beats each. First, four beats each. Cool. So, play. Just play the first two lines, mm -hmm. and now it's an aim to keep it nice and steady in regards to the beats. This piece is in the same BPM as the last one, 120. Yeah. So it's still going to be one, two, three, four, and one, two. That's three. what I was trying to work out. Yeah, not very good at counting it. Okay. Yeah. So when you've got pieces like this, it's not too bad to count out loud. Um, when you get to later pieces, it might be a bit of a struggle. But that's when you learn each bar slowly and then count yeah. enough, and then your fingers will learn it via muscle memory. Yeah, okay. Yeah? All right, first two lines. Okay, Gaza. Gaza, here we are. There you are, mate. Right. Yeah, there's the doggy. There's the elephant. Right. Working really well for you. <laughs> I know. I've got such a visual. I, I'm literally seeing <laughs> Gary sitting there eating his avocado. <laughs> Don't mind me. Right. Okay, so. One, two, three. I forgot what I was playing then. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, no! Okay. Yeah, there you go. All right. One note wrong. Was it? Yes. You played in bar three, you played an F, uh, you played an E instead of an F. Did I? You did. You went. Two, three. Oh. No, I'm playing it wrong. Yeah, you played an E <laughs> instead of an F. Oh, uh, okay. But, but I'll, I'll give you that timing was there. That's yeah. fine. And. It's difficult to count that timing. Try, trying to do it at the same time, there, there's a lot going on. Mm. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, when it comes to playing it with a backing track, that's actually a really helpful way of finding out if you've actually ended up sort of accidentally learning the wrong notes. Because, mm. for example, if you practice that same line and did the same mistake two or three more times, it's not like this is a recognisable piece of music yeah. to you. So you wouldn't know if it was right or wrong, and therefore you wouldn't 
check yourself. Mm. So you do need the backing track for it, really? You do need the backing track if you're not in the habit of double checking all your notes as you're playing. Because mm. I assume you sort of got into the sort of a feeling you already assumed you were confident with what note you were going to next. Yeah. And therefore you didn't read the note as much as you could have done. Yes, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I will also provide backing tracks. Oh no, I am providing backing tracks on all of these pieces with just for piano as well. So you don't have to hear all the instruments, it's just for piano and then you can hear the exact timing and speed. Nice. Yeah. That's good. So let's look at line three. Yeah. Line nine. We've got a symbol there. Yeah. What is that symbol? All right, that is a flat. That is a flat because sharp looks like a hashtag. Yes, it does. It hashtag does. sharp. Hashtag sharp. That's me. And then a B looks like a flat. Or yeah. that's a B. Um, in this case, what note is that flat on? Right, so that is on an E. Exactly. Yep. And that E is normally play, played by your third finger. Yeah. So put your third finger on E flat. Exactly, which is just down the piano. So, realistically, throughout this whole piece, I've included flats whenever there's an, uh, an E. Yeah. So, you could, like, if you're taking this piece for the first time, you sort of quickly scan for it and say, right, there's an E flat, right, there's an E flat. Are there any other E's? No. Therefore, I can keep my finger oh, resting on E flat the entire time. Right, okay. That makes sense. In this piece of music. That's why we haven't used the E so far. Exactly. Cool. There you go. So. You evil man. I know. Line three. Give okay. it a shot. Uh, okay, and then we got a D, which is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh no, we're going down again. We are going down. And then, okay, it's the same, that's fine. Right, so. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Four. Yep. Three, four. Cool, yeah. cool, let's go, let's go line four. Okay. Right, uh, okay, we're back there again. Who is that? That is Gary! Here he is! One, two, three. What? So, what, what line did I just say to play? Can you remember? I thought you said this one. I said line four. One, two, three, four. Wait, do I skip an entire line? Skip an entire line. <laughs> I'm like, Gary? What's going on? This is the doggy. Right, okay. All right, let's try that again. Doggy? Oh, it's not, is it? That's the E. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, no, there are. There is an E here. What do you mean there is an E here? E flat, E. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, oh, oh, oh sorry, okay, okay, sorry. So I thought you were still on the concept of dogs and. No, yeah, no, I got no, confused. No. Okay, so what's happening here is in bar 13, we've got an example of what happens when you've got multiple flats in a bar. To save basically on ink and making things really confusing when a piece gets more complicated, the flat lasts throughout the bar. Ah! Yes. Wow, that is. I know, right? Evil. Okay. Yeah. So the only way it would come out of that if there was a natural sign, it looks like a skew if sharp, but I'm going to get to that in a later lesson. Oh, so that, right, I get it. Yeah. Oh, it's so cold in there. It's all flats. Yeah, okay. Cool. Right. So it's all flats mm -hmm. on the elephant. Flat elephant. Exactly. Right. Here okay. We go. And then that's the uh, F there, so that would be the front door. Yeah, okay. Right. Can I pause you for a moment? Yeah. Where's the front door? There. Does the doghouse have a front door? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, well, you'd like to think so, but no, the front door is there. My finger was on the wrong one. There right. you go. Yeah. Your fingers are starting to squash together as well, so. Yeah. Yeah, keep an eye on them. Okay. Here we go. Right. Line four. <laughs> I'm impressed you saw that. <laughs> that four finger evil is just pressing all of them at once. <laughs> and very much the same as piece one. We've got six lines. The first or the last two are the same as the first two. Oh, okay. Which cool. is nice and easy. Again, yeah. it's, it's sort of this repetitive thing which at least is going to sort of train your brain a yeah. little bit to get your head around those notes. Yeah. 
it's line five. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just informing the viewers. I'm, do I'm doing two things at the same time. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, I was reading yeah. it again from the start, but it's the same thing. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. You practice that for a little bit. Yeah. See if you can get your way through it. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to get you the backing track. Okay, you do that. Right. I'll get you the complex version. Don't you worry. Oh, thank you. Right. Okay. Get into position. I'm so annoyed that I let that get to me. Right. Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> you were so happy with Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this Gary guy. So, would you like the full backing track with or without the piano accompanying you? I think. Right, let's, let's work our way up. Work our way What's up. What's the easiest one first? Uh, there's the light backing track, technically. Okay, let's I do just, that. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Hope you're fine. So for all of you who are watching, you can get the backing tracks for this piece on the website and you'll find one that's just piano on its own. I mean, that's not really a backing track. I guess that's just you being able to hear what it sounds like. Yeah. You got the lights backing track, which is not as many instruments. You've got the full backing track with the piano, and then you've got the full backing track without the piano. That last one's going to be the most complicated because you're going to hear a lot of instruments going along, much as if you were sitting in an orchestra who are doing different things to you. So you've got to make sure your counting and your timing is perfect. Mm. Yeah? Nice. Okay. So this piece still has uh, two bars of counting. Yeah. Uh, this time it's going to be with a cymbal. Okay. That's my brother's doing. Nice. All right. All right, you ready? Nope. Here we go. <laughs> I sort of hadn't twigged, but when we were practicing, we were playing it slightly slower than the back track. Yeah. So it, it picked up pace quite a bit. It did, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, overall, that wasn't a bad, bad mm. start at all. Yeah. It was just a case of making sure that you are aware of what's coming up next. Yeah. If you go wrong, see if you can skip maybe two bars mm -hmm. and get your eyes focused and prepare for that straight away, as opposed to yeah. just giving yourself maybe two beats. This rest. is where I can see that it's good that you keep your fingers resting on there because I keep doing that. Yeah, exactly. That, that was an F sharp when it really shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, then also, don't forget that at the end of bar, sorry, at the end of line three, we've got a minim, not a dotted minim. <clears throat> uh, sorry. Uh, that one there. Yes. So that's in bar that 12. That really caught me out as well. Yeah, I noticed yeah. you had that down for three beats. Yeah. So I want to go over the same again? Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, I think so. Here we go.
<laughs> oh, this one's evil! <laughs> Why do you keep moving? <laughs> Stay! <laughs> oh, oh, I promise I don't laugh this hard with my actual students. Oh. No, normally I'm really encouraging, but that was good. Oh, why? <laughs> Don't bother play that one. <laughs> I think we should just go again. Just, just get it. Just get it. Oh, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to practice any part of that? I think I just need to go through it slowly. Okay. Go for it. Go for it slowly before we jump okay. in. Okay. Keep. Mm -hmm. That's the one I I keep doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I think that's lower. It's higher. Definitely higher. It's that. literally higher on the on the page. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Logically, it should be higher at the piano. Yeah. That was correct. You're second guessing yourself now. Yeah. Okay. So. So, when it comes to looking at line four, at the end of line four, you've got seven C's in a row. Yeah. Yeah? Realistically, that's not very difficult to play, correct? No, no it's not. So in which case, not only can you prepare your forefinger, ready to hit the D straight away, but then you can think, right, where am I going yeah. in line five? I see, so really plan it ahead. Yeah, if you've got that much time of the same thing happening over and over, look what's gonna happen next and just be ready. Because mm. ideally, across bars and across lines, there are no pauses and no gaps. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Think we'll go back and track? Yeah, go on, let's give it a go. Here we go. Where did I go wrong there? That was line the... five. Well, pr pretty much it was the end of line four. Yeah. Where it, where it sort of fell apart a bit. Okay. Because I think what happened was you had to trip up at the start of line four. Yeah. And then I think you were sort of more worried about reading those exact notes right there and then than preparing for what was coming. And next. my finger started floating again. Yeah. I started going there. I caught it, but then in doing so. Yeah. I got confused. Because I mean, lines five <laughs> and six are the same as one and two. Yeah. Are the same. Mm -hmm. So it's just a case of just imagining yourself back at the start to get that bit, yeah. bit going again. Okay. So did you want to try one more attempt or shall we leave it there for today and nah, then come back more. to it and practice it? Okay. One more. One yeah, more? Yeah, give it one more. 
Yeah. Okay. And then I'll do practice if I get this wrong or right. Whatever. Okay. Same thing. D right. Here we go. Yes, Gary. You ready? Yes. See, so okay. it did change up a bit at the end. Right. But but yes, that, that was really good up until, basically it was up until bar uh, line five. Yeah. Which is interesting because you're absolutely fine at one and two. Yeah. But it's 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 a case of, of you you've got you've got those two sections. And when you start the piece on lines one and two, you can focus entirely about section A. When yeah. you start the piece, you can think about entirely section A. Section B is arguably a little bit harder to just make sure your fingers are in the right place for, mm. which again requires a bit more thinking. But then you've got no time, like like all of your like memory energy is sort of used up by the time yeah. you get to the next section A. It's like, oh no, even though this is the same, yeah, it's like I'm starting from scratch. It is, it's like trying to reset your fingers because I'm yes. using these two. And then it's back there, and by that point, my fingers have moved. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You could say that section A is mostly at the top half of your fingers, yeah. and then section B almost has a little bit more of a focus lower down. Mm. So it's like, well, at least at the end, it definitely does. So then it's a big flip yeah. to get back up there. And yeah. do you know what? This scares me even more the fact that you can read this, but not only that, have two lines going at the same time. Yeah? Yeah. It's. I, th I think. I think you're really underestimating how well you've already done through that. Yeah? Yeah, put it, put it this way, put it this way, okay? So here's how most people learn the piano. Most people end up with a book. There's a particular book that I actually like to use. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the why? No. But, uh, okay, this, this book, you can actually get a, a, a slow progression piano course book, and it's, it's by John Thompson. I'll put a link in the description. Affiliate link, if I figure that out. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, and basically, this book starts you from reading the right hand notes on middle C going up, and the left hand notes start from middle C going down. So you play the whole book in your hands around here. At no point throughout those 35, 36 pages are the hands playing at the same time. Really? Yes. Wow. First piece. It's pretty much that. Oh, yeah. Next piece. Oh, would you believe it? It's that. <laughs> Next piece. Next piece. And that just seems very frustrating. Yes. Yeah, so when I've been teaching a lot of kids this sort of thing, that's, that's absolutely fine because what can happen is you can you progress really fast and it's really mm. great because you're turning pages, you're, yeah. you're making loads of progress. But for somebody who's actually trying to learn rapidly and create a lot of progression mm. as quickly as they can, it's not ideal. Yeah. So by piece three, we're already putting both hands together, which is something that you don't see until book two of this John Thompson yeah. book. And even then I'm using notes that they wouldn't use. Really? Yeah, just, just uh, basically I'm trying to create something that sounds good from the get-go. Yeah, yeah. And playing anything around there never sounds good just on its own. Even mm. if you're playing both hands, it just doesn't translate. If yeah. you have your hands further apart, it's more comfortable, sounds better, and therefore you're motivated to practice more. Yeah, I have no doubt by the time next week I'll have this down. Maybe even yeah. at 240 BPM, you never know. You never know, you never know. <laughs> but that's actually something that you can do. You can, mm. like, particularly when it comes to learning two hand pieces, you learn the right hand on its own, you learn the left hand on its own. Yeah. But you can learn it until you're faster than the BPM. Mm. If you do that, then it means that when you put both hands together, your fingers have really got the muscle memory down. Yeah. And so it's not as much thinking involved to put both hands together. Mm. Um, I see that. 
obviously you don't want to practice straight away at top speed yeah because that can then lead to mistakes start slowly and work your way up but that is the ideal way to do it and the more you play the more music you play i mean this is literally the second piece of music that you're trying to play on the piano yeah and you're all but sight reading it mm, this is true and that's grade one level sight reading Mm. To, to be able to grade, grade one level sight reading is okay maybe it's, okay it's two hands normally but it's yeah. only four lines yeah meanwhile you're having to just read a whole piece yeah that's so, cool yeah don't diminish yourself good there you go diminish music pun music pun <laughs> <laughs> yes got it in there so to recap we looked at the left hand today on a piece called The Journey you can find that on my website including the backing tracks as well if you want to learn anything involving uh, reading the notes, any music theory about how to read the treble clef, the bass clef, even make up your own scales and later on make up your own pieces, please join the school because it's going to get interesting. Mm. And I'm looking forward to where this is heading. Mm, I have no doubt it will. No doubt it will. Thank you. Right, in which case we will see you in the next lesson. See you later. <laughs>